There have been some rather disturbing stories lately of people getting in the way of the emergency services. I don't know about you, but I find this quite mind-boggling. People's lives are being put at risk for seemingly trivial reasons. In one recent case, a man confronted some paramedics because their ambulance was blocking his driveway and he was going to be late for work. They were trying to resuscitate a child who had collapsed, and a couple of them had gone back to the ambulance to fetch an important piece of equipment. They were stopped by an irate homeowner who threatened them with violence and tore a wing mirror off the ambulance. For the record, the emergency services do try their best not to block roads or driveways wherever possible, but saving lives is their number one priority. Basically, Sorry, but if saving lives means that you're going to have to phone your supervisor to explain why you're half an hour late for work, that's just something you're going to have to live with. It's not just Germany, by the way. There was a similar case recently in Britain, where an ambulance crew returned to their vehicle to find a passive-aggressive note under the windscreen wiper. At least it was just a note, but still, inexcusable. Just to be clear about this, it is an offence to hinder the emergency services. In serious cases, you could be looking at a four-figure fine or even a prison sentence. So here are a few things to watch out for in Germany. A very important concept here in Germany is the rescue lane. Unfortunately, it is a concept that Germans themselves often have difficulty remembering, but still, it is a rule and you must follow it. If you're on any road with two or more lanes in each direction and traffic has slowed to less than 10 kilometers an hour or has come to a complete stop, a rescue lane must be formed for any emergency vehicles that might need it. Vehicles in the leftmost lane must move to the left, all other vehicles move to the right. And this must be done as soon as the traffic slows down enough. Don't wait until you hear a siren. You might be thinking that that's what the hard shoulder is for, but no. For various reasons, the shoulder is completely unsuitable. In fact, if at all possible, you should try to keep the shoulder clear as well. The rescue lane is only for emergency vehicles and not for anybody else. You may see cars being driven down it by people who are just impatient and don't care about little things like the law or keeping the damn lane clear for ambulances. Even if you do see other people doing it, don't do it yourself. Oh, and you also need to ensure that junctions are kept clear so that emergency vehicles joining the road can get to the rescue lane. Another issue that has become a real problem recently has been rubber necking. In particular, vehicles have been slowing or even completely stopping so that people inside them can take photos or even videos of accidents. This can hinder not only the emergency services, but other road users as well, as it leads to longer tailbacks and more delays. And you can get into very serious trouble indeed if you post graphic images of accident victims online. It's not just the gore, it's the fact that it shows a callous disregard for the privacy of the victims and the feelings of their loved ones. In a recent case near here, firefighters actually resorted to spraying offending cars with water, while the police stopped several vehicles and actually took down the details of people they'd caught filming the scene. Oh, and a judge later ruled that while there are better ways of dealing with rubberneckers, spraying their cars with water wasn't dangerous and therefore wasn't illegal. And it was completely understandable under the circumstances. Finally, when you're looking for a parking spot, a sign like one of these indicates an access point specially designed for emergency vehicles. Parking there is illegal. Stick to these rules and the emergency services will thank you. Well, actually, they probably won't because they'll be far too busy doing other things, but you know what I mean. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to send me a postcard, here's the address. And don't forget to visit my website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Also, if you'd like access to special bonus content and help with the costs of running this channel, please consider making a small monthly donation on Patreon.